everybody. It is Sunday night and I am back live on YouTube. I am super excited about the uh, conversation we're going to have tonight. And after last week's response, I just can't tell you how um, the, the comments and the feedback from um, the uh, story we used from Jerry have really helped people. So there's this weird part about um, being live uh, that uh, I spend the first few minutes talking to myself. So I am waiting for a few of you just to say that you can hear me and you can see me. Uh, I see that my, my comments aren't scrolling, so I was just trying to hop over to this one uh, and see if that is working right. So thank you for joining me. And I am going to do a little experiment that we're going to do at the beginning and the end of this uh, this show. So it go is going to tie together when we get all the way to the end. So I will uh, take out, actually, we're going to get it here. Let's go this way. And um, I am going to check my ketones and my glucose live in front of you. So I have my little foric hair, uh, and I am actually kind of uh, at the beginning of my fast. I, I like to fast um, through the show. <laughs> Uh, we usually have a family meal on Sundays, and um, we are raising teenagers at this stage of our life, so we make them play a board game with us. So we usually play our board game, and at the end of our board game, we then um, reflect on their behavior. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's the adult behavior that's not the best. Uh, but I'm just going to show you my numbers uh, as it counts down. Uh, my glucose was 88. My ketones are almost there at... Um, 1.7. So again, uh, I can totally feel the stress of getting ready for the, uh, the, uh, the live show. And I use that as a teachable moment for what does stress do to your sugar. Again, we're doing this live, so I guess I will know more about what my sugar does at the end. Let's uh, see if those, uh, if those comments have cashed out. Boy, there's, uh, let's see if I can make them scroll. I can't seem to make them go. So I'm going to use uh, the bigger screen here instead of keeping those comments live. But I do have it set up next to me to watch those comments. Um, so give me a thumbs up about where you're from and that you can hear me. So I am uh, in that little bit of a delay and love to see the comments that say, yes, we can hear you just fine and that you can see my glucoses. Um, I am going to do an experiment with the new product that I launched this past week. And I will tell you more about why I'm going to do that experiment um, in a short order. So uh, turn the volume up, somebody says. Okay, so I think I have it as high as I can go. Um, maybe I could push a button here on this to go higher. Um, turn volume up. Turn, only one has said turn volume up. So I'm going to watch for if somebody else needs the volume turned up, that would be awesome. Um, because volume is my, my weakness. Everybody, every superhero needs to have a kryptonite, and mine is sound while live. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I'm going to show you something. I just showed you my sugars. Um, so if somebody wants to help me remember, uh, others say they can hear me fine, can hear me fine. Awesome, that's great. Uh, I am going to take a scoop of this and put it in uh, water. So this is a scoop, putting it in water. And I am going to stir that up and take a drink of this. All right, so the reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to teach the difference between BHB and MCT and what it does. And I always am sipping on something during my lives. So this is what I'm going to sip on tonight. So I just stirred that up. And we're going to use this to drink. And then I'm going to tell you a story about Jerry. Because Jerry, <laughs> Jerry really has been an inspiration for so many people. So that's the first, like about a third of this. I will sip on it as we go along. And then at the end, we're going to do an experiment. All right, so um, Jerry is uh, this uh, man from, um, well, he's kind of traveling the world, <laughs> or traveling the United States in an RV. So I think he's been in a couple places, but he's been in Utah this week. I see some other people checking in on their comments there from Utah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for telling me where you're from. It really does help me. Uh, talking to myself <laughs> is not quite uh, my favorite thing to do, um, but I uh, am in a new location tonight too. So I grew up on my family farm uh, in South Dakota. Population of my little town is about 800, and I drove to the farm, and I'm doing my live from the farm. So 
Um, it looks like the internet's holding me well enough, and um, we've had all the, the sounds that, I was gonna try to do it outside, but there were so many bugs <laughs> that I said, let's, let's do this inside. So I'm inside my farmhouse going live from uh, the middle of South Dakota. And oh, we are gonna use Jerry's story again in addition because so many of you wrote in. I was just so impressed that people hadn't heard about really what happens to your A1C, uh, your, your hemoglobin inside your red blood cells when your sugars go high. And Jerry had done some amazing improvements in his health over the last seven months, uh, but was a little like, unsettled uh, about how uh, his numbers were were better in many areas like his weight and his blood pressure and a lot of his fasting sugars had been better but his overall um, uh, comment or his overall uh, hemoglobin A1C had only improved by about a point so it had gone from like 10 point two to 9.1 or something like that. And he was like, my doctor wasn't very impressed. <laughs> so we used his story last week to teach you about what's happening on that hemoglobin level. And uh, again, what happens to white blood cells when they get uh, filled with sugar over time, why it is that our immune systems don't do what they're supposed to do. Uh, we then further taught through his story that, um, you know, there's been so many things that have been repaired for uh, Jerry, as his brain is working better, as the neuropathy in his fingers is better, and he uh, says, I just can't believe even my eye doctor doesn't want to shoot steroids into my eye anymore. Uh, that isn't easy to accomplish. So, um, <laughs> uh, it, it, I'm getting comments about the signal being a little slow and a little bit laggy. Um, it's, I've got a yellow warning from YouTube, sometimes a red warning from YouTube that it might not be quite strong enough, but it's as good as we've got. I can flip it to my um, hotspot if I needed to, but let's, let's see if it carries it. Um, keep giving me comments on it because that's the only way I know is what you guys are seeing. It's live. <laughs> I, um, the, the point I'm making though is Jerry's story has been super inspirational. One of the highest you know, one week marks I've had uh, since I launched was Jerry's story and the discussion about he has lost um, 70 pounds and he is in his late 60s. Uh, that's amazing. As a physician, if I would have a diabetic lose any weight, I would be impressed. Uh, but to have that kind of weight loss at his age, uh, that his hemoglobin A1C isn't great, <laughs> uh, is a part of the process. And we're going to talk more about what he should be doing. Because um, I'm going to flip over and use my keynote. So again, this is really important that you keep uh, send me comments if something happens. When I do keynote on uh, YouTube or when I give you these slides, you can see me and you can see the slides, but I can't see any of you or your comment. I, I can see them on my phone, so I can't see when something goes wrong. So I'm going to use um, this to get... Um, get uh, this story told a little bit better because Jerry, I think, is watching and he has um, the, the privilege of uh, being put on the spot, maybe. Uh, let's see here. And let me go back to this one and there we go. All right, so as I look at um, this uh, keynote, we're just gonna check mics, make sure that's working. Looks like it's all working. Um, and I'm gonna push play. And we're gonna use Jerry's story. Then I'll be back and we'll answer some more of these questions. So thank you for the comments coming in. Um, for all of you out there, the, the goal of what I'm trying to do today is to talk about folks that are, uh, and the weight loss do's and don'ts, the good things that happen with, with um, a uh, ketogenic diet like weight loss, some people when they don't have that or when they're losing weight a little too fast is something I am going to give you a heads up about what I would recommend. So here we go. All right, so um, this uh, slide deck uh, has a um, beginning with to remind you who Jerry was, he's 68. This is eight months into his keto story. He uh, really didn't have a doctor helping him much with this outside of reading the book any way you can. 
So he did read a few other books, but essentially said this was the one he used as his roadmap. And in that time, he lost uh, 70 pounds, down to 185 pounds last week. He dropped a couple of shirt sizes. His pant size almost uh, you know, dropped uh, eight inches around the middle. Uh, his mental clarity improved. His mood was much more stable. That tingling from his diabetes that was really uh, uh, affecting his hands and feet is, is disappearing. Inflamed gums. Uh, the dentist says, I can't believe how much better they are. I've never seen an old man gum turn around, gum disease turn around so quickly. Uh, and we talked a little bit about that last week. The eyeglass prescription was improved. And again, that ophthalmologist said, hey, you're doing so good. I don't need to shoot you in the eyeball with a, um, a steroid shot. So this past week, again, I just need to keep in mind, Jerry is 68 years old. He and his wife are in an RV and they are doing some things that aren't very easy, they're hard, uh, like temptations when you're on the road. But after la watching last week and showing him that if you really want to improve this diabetes process without uh, the, the insulin, and I think the insulin might be necessary at some point, but we're not, we're not forcing that. We're going to see how he does. Uh, 36 hours into his fast, and his fast was black coffee with some M MCT oil and he really was having no issues. I'd warned about if, you're, if you haven't done uh, MCT, specifically that C8, C10, you can find yourself with some trots to the bathroom if you're, if you're not used to digesting that. But he said he was doing great, and uh, his, um, he woke up at 1.45 in the morning during one of these fasts. I think it was the second or third day of his fast. And he's like, immediately I, I, I was awake. And so we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Why was he awake at 1.30 in the morning or 1.45 in the morning? And he said, I thought, oh, man, we should do a test to see um, uh, if, um, <laughs> if, I, if I can prove what it looks like to have the dawn effect. Because he is a diabetic and his sugars are really high in the morning. So he wakes up a few hours before he's supposed to awaken, but he's in the middle of a fast, so we get to see some numbers. So we fast forward to the next, uh, to the middle of the night, he gets up, and keep in mind, by the end of this fast, he was down to 179 pounds, and his blood pressure was normal at 128 over 72, not on medications. Uh, his uh, two o'clock in the morning, so was, he has two different blood sugar monitors he was looking at, he, he used his Kroger blood glucose to, and got 205. The Fora 6, which is an I, I put a lot, of <clears throat> a lot of effort behind. I'm going to take another drink of my ketones here. Uh, his Fora 6 was 211. And his ketones were 2.6. That put his Dr. Boz ratio at 81. That's a really good number, especially for 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and again, uh, Jerry has had average blood sugars up closer to 300 before this story started. So he's uh, doing great in my book. Now he wakes up in the morning, gets up around 8 o'clock, and his blood sugar is up. Again, there's that dawn effect where, hey, why in the heck did my blood sugar go up like that? So he's got a blood sugar on, that, on the Kroger blood glucose monitor at 250. His blood sugar... At, uh, for the Fora Care was 240, so very similar. Again, the, the monitors are very similar, uh, but I, I do have a little more confidence in the Fora Care one. And his ketones were up even a little bit more at, at uh, 2.9, keeping his Dr. Boz ratio pretty darn good. 82 is where we want for weight loss, you know, right around that 80 mark for, for weight loss. And, you know, as much as I am a big proponent of testing things, I do warn people that those blood glucose uh, um, meters, they do have an error of, uh, I think it's plus or minus three or plus or minus eight, I can't remember. Uh, so you do have a little bit of range that it can be when we compare it to the lab, but pretty darn good for when we're looking at glucose monitors um, uh, and being able to check you know, at two o'clock in the morning when you want to. All right, so then he starts his fast. Last week after his show, he's like, I'm going, I'm diving in. I'm going to do this, uh, this fast for, for as long as I can. Uh, and he started on his fast um, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, no, excuse me, Sunday through Thursday. Uh, he then was doing one meal a day after that. So then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is today, he did one meal a day, and he'll start his fast again after that one meal on Sunday. 
So he further said uh, uh, this evening, uh, which um, is when he'll start his fast again, so that's Sunday evening, and then he wants to go to Thursday. Uh, interesting side note is that he is down to 174 pounds. So if you look at the full like seven day weight loss, he is at 9.3 pounds in a week. And I know we titled this, um, I'm on the keto diet and not losing weight, but I'm gonna use Jerry's weight loss uh, as a teaching moment to show you some of the things we're thinking about when people lose weight. His goal was to get to 175. He knows that that's a BMI just outside the, the, um, the area of weight uh, of being overweight. If he can get that tw at BMI to 25.0, we call that normal. Uh, his blood sugar is still not doing very well in the mornings. That, that 230 is real. His Dr. Boz ratio is down under 100, which I said that should be his first goal. Uh, I look at the Dr. Boz ratios out there on Instagram and folks can get down to those 20s and they are doing amazing, but they don't start at the same metabolism and the same like heaviness that and I don't mean weight-wise, I just mean metabolic demand that uh, Jerry was at. So I am going to use um, the, um, he then again says, thanks for your support and wh what do you think I should do? So I'm going to uh, just take a minute uh, as I watch the, um, Okay, so I'm just waiting to see that. Yeah, okay, there it goes. There's some buffering that is happening on live on the live show. I'm just giving it a little time to get caught up, um, and then watching to see if anybody else is seeing that. I bet you you are. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're going to use one th one study that's out there that shows you what chemically is going on behind these fasts. Uh, you know, last week when you when I showed uh, Jerry's struggles and what his hemoglobin A1C was means and how his body is trying to repair, but it needs iron, that's really important, and it needs that glucose to not make those red blood cells and those white blood cells so sticky, especially on the inside where it doesn't get to do its job as well of delivering oxygen, if that is the case. So your energy increases after, we're gonna show energy at 72 hours, which has a little bit to do about that middle of the night awakening for Jerry. Uh, I'm using an article from 2000 because they did a really good study. They did awesome blood levels over these several days. Um, had a whole bunch of smarty pants working on the case there. Um, and I think this teaches a lot better about what happens inside a fast. I will tell you that unlike Jerry, the people in this fast were healthy. Uh, so we're going to show you a few things. Um, first of all, we're going to plot out and watch their numbers at zero hours. So that's before they started the fast. These were not keto people. They were just normal people having their life. Uh, we're going to look at numbers at 24 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours. Um, the amount of things they checked in these patients is unreal. Like, I love this study because you can... I, I'm not even showing you in this uh, slide deck tonight how many things they, they studied for these patients, but we're going to look at their glucose. These people weren't like Jerry. They were not diabetic, but I think it's helpful to see that their blood sugar ranged from about almost 97 to about 80, uh, and that was before they started fasting. When they got to 24 hours without food, they got down to what I think of as that normal fasting glucose, which is 65. When I tell patients that um, the, the glucose, I'm gonna take another quick drink here. When I tell people that their glucose normal is 65, they kind of look at me like I, I've, I've grown you know, wings. That, that, that must not be true. But if you look at a healthy human, a healthy metabolism, uh, that fasting sugar should settle down into that 65 range. Um, People think your brain won't work, but nope, this is how you get your brain to use the metabolism uh, of, um, of ketones is to make sure that the sugar is enough, but not excessive. And that's how our bodies continue to repair and stay strong and healthy. Uh, again, they looked at 48 hours, it was pretty much the same. And they looked at 72 hours and it's pretty much the same. So uh, their blood glucoses, once they got past the sugar that they had put in, uh, they really stayed at a um, 65 range. Um, I like to point out that in those, uh, in that picture, I show you a picture of our little glucose guy, which is the little red square. And then I have this bubble looking thing called a, I, it's called glycogen. 
Uh, and this is where, where uh, not only is, does Jerry's Dawn phenomenon really matter here, but also to the folks that aren't, are, are struggling to lose weight. So if you dive in, glycogen is a, uh, it is a um, storage uh, 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 chain of sugars. So when the sugars have been floating around your body for a while, that you can see up in that, um, in that little uh, blood, uh, blood vessel there, there's a whole bunch of little squares, and those are representing glycogen. Whenever I talk about sugar, I, I put them in the, the little rhomboid-looking uh, squares, and some of them have a happy face, and some of them kind of look a little drowsy. Some of them are even sleeping, because if you have a little bit of sugar, that's a good, little, good energy, but the excessive amounts of sugar really are hard on our brains. They inflame our brain, and the mood is... Um, the mood and brain are very affected by excessive uh, times exposed to high blood sugar. And again, that's really what last week was all about, is what happens to the red blood cells and white blood cells when that happens. When your body sees a bunch of sugar floating around, it does, it helps you. It wants to keep your blood sugar normal. And the way it does that is it takes sugar and turns it into a uh, glycogen-like substance, or glycogen, which is kind of looks like a fatty substance inside the, the liver. And so when you look at people who say, I have a fatty liver, I need to stop eating fat. Uh, first of all, you've been uninformed. That's not correct. When you have a fatty liver, it means you had so much sugar in your circulation for so long that your body kept trying to pull those sugars out of the circulation so that your red blood cells and your white blood cells wouldn't do those things we talked about last week. Instead, their sugar got stored because your body, your liver is so certain that you're gonna run out of food the way you're eating, <laughs> that you are supposed to eat a little bit all year round and the way there is so much glucose in your bloodstream, boy, you must be eating through the storages so they're gonna store this glucose for you. And the first package that it puts it in is this glycogen. The next package that it puts it in is the fat. And when people say, I have this hepatitis, this uh, non um, steatitis, you know, the, it's the fat that ends up in the liver. Uh, and so they call it uh, non alcoholic steatohepatitis, N A S H. So NASH is the, the acronym. But what they're saying is, you have a bunch of fat in your liver. And if you stop thinking or stop getting educated at that point, you're going to think that you should stop eating fat, which is not what you need. You need to stop storing so much sugar. So when people come to the ketogenic diet and they are, you know, feeling a little better, their blood sugars are, are, are probably much more stable than they have been, um, but they kind of hit this plateau area where they're not really losing weight. Maybe they really didn't. I've had a few that didn't lose any weight at all. And when I go to check numbers on them, they notoriously have a, some inflammation in their liver. And again, it's not a big spike in those numbers on their labs. It's the chronic elevation of, uh, of liver enzymes. And if I could peek into their, their liver, I just know they would have a whole bunch of these glycogen balls in their liver. So when we look at how you undo that, it has to be a time where your body doesn't have access to the glucose and it can undo that. And unfortunately, like what's happening with Jerry, he has so much stored sugar that his body will put a bunch of sugar into his circulation out of the storage and it's keeping his sugars in that 200 range. That's way too high. We don't want it that high. Um, un unfortunately, the signal to make insulin is also decreasing. We're gonna get into that in just a minute. So here is your, here is your, here is your liver. Uh, this is supposed to be another representation of a blood vessel, but this time you don't just see those little uh, squares uh, circling around or uh, circulating around. You also see these little blue circles, and I call those my ketone neurons, my ketone bodies. They, they circulate. They are my. They are the source of fuel that can zip in and out of a cell. They don't need the help getting inside your cell like glucose does. They uh, can fuel a mitochondria, specifically the the um, the uh, the mitochondria for uh, your brain. Once it gets across that blood-brain barrier, your brain cells love these mitochondria, love these ketones, uh, and it will supply you with a, an abundant amount of energy. As you watch though, um, once that sugar is decreased and the ketones are in circulation, but not in excessive, like, and you've got a pretty good number of ketones floating in there, 
um, you're going to see that our our glucose uh, starts to go back into the circulation, which is where people like Jerry show up and say, hey, guess what? My glucose um, is way too high. How, I haven't eaten any glucose in three days. How is my glucose still 230 in the morning? And this in part has to do with that dawn effect that he said, I want to show people this dawn effect. I mean, they wake up, they have a, a blood sugar of 110. And I'm jealous of the 110. And of course, I want Jerry to get down to that blood glucose of 65. So we, we have a ways to go. But what happens before your body wakes up is there is a signal that your brain hears that the sun is about to rise. And this is a very deeply programmed part of being human that as the sun rises, your, your steroids within your body, specifically cortisol, will shoot up uh, and will signal the body to get ready for the day, get ready for the day. You know, when we check people who've had been shift workers for 30 years to say, do they still do that? They've been getting up at, you know, at five o'clock in the afternoon for the better part of 20 years. D does their brain even do that little signal anymore? And the answer is absolutely. They still shoot up cortisol in the morning despite 20 years of practicing getting up at 5 o'clock at night. And this has, has a lot to do with how many of our hormones are very much the evolution of being man has been without electricity for everything but a blink of our history. Uh, it has been based on the sun and to wake up before the sun comes up or right as the sun comes up, your, your brain has a, has a pituitary gland which sends a signal to the liver saying, hey, you know that storage, that stored sugar you had from yesterday? I want you to release some. We're about to wake up. And that's why Jerry, in the middle of the night at 2 o'clock, had a blood sugar of 200-ish. Uh, and then he woke up five hours later and it was higher. It's like, that is not fair. <laughs> and the place he's getting it from is his liver. And so I'm telling him, just don't, uh, don't stress about the fact that the sugar isn't perfect yet. Uh, there is a part of me that wants to put him on some long-acting insulin because uh, he, he isn't going to make very much insulin until, and he still needs it until we get this glycogen emptied. And speaking of insulin, this is the, that study of those healthy people. Remember, this was healthy. Um, but they watched what happened at that zero mark, and we're going to look at what insulin looks like over these next, um, over their studies. So again, these are the healthy people. Uh, they don't have diabetes, and when they first checked in, their insulin, and you can see the, the little character I have for insulin is this guy, you can't quite see it in this picture, but he has an eye for insulin on his forehead. He's got a big forehead, and he's got flames coming out of it because excessive amounts of insulin. As much as uh, insulin um, is life-saving, I kind of demonize it for a teaching point to say, too much insulin uh, is inflammatory and it is um, really hard on your brain. It is really hard on your heart. It is really hard on your, your nerve repair. Uh, that insulin is doing everything in its power to keep the sugar in the circulation down, and it will outfight you for until you die. Unless you stop making it, it will outfight you. And again, that's what, that's what Jerry was really worried about, is that, did, does my pancreas burn out? Did I wait too long? And I said, don't give up hope. We, we'll see how this plays out. We're going to do a few things over the next few weeks to see how Jerry is doing. So um, Jerry's insulin would probably be 40 if I could check it um, uh, when he's fasting. He's just had a lot of insulin made over time. But if you were healthy, it's about 10. Now they go 24 hours without food, and their insulin is almost exactly the same. Again, these people are not insulin resistant, but in, in, a, in our unhealthy patients, or our patients who've had excessive weight for many years, that insulin doesn't change a lot the first 24 hours. Um, by the time you get to 48 hours, you can see a statistical difference. Now it's down to nine. And when they got out to the 72 hour mark, they were able to see, yes, we did see a measurable decrease. Um, actually, I think the 8.4 was the statistical part. So again, the range of insulin was uh, pretty, uh, it kind of, uh, insulin is a difficult bugger to, marry, to, to measure. As soon as it starts floating around, it can really, um, it can curse you a little bit. Um, so I, I show you that in hopes to um, uh, say, in healthy people, the insulin doesn't change much. Uh, in Jerry, we expect the insulin to come down, and that's part of why his sugars are going up, because that stored glycogen in his liver has been hanging out in his liver for the better part of a couple decades. And now, for the first time, you know, the, 
the police officer's gone. The cop has is, is escaped the jail, and he's sitting there saying, wow, I can escape? I can put these glucose back into circulation? And he kind of overshoots. <laughs> he's got so much storage that his sugars shoot right up. Uh, and he's like, I must be doing something wrong. <laughs> like, no, you're not quite doing something wrong. But this is uh, the ketones. Again, these people are healthy. So I would contend that we can see, um, I actually had another patient write in saying, can you just tell me how long it takes to get to these certain Dr. Boz ratios? I don't wanna check my numbers, I just wanna use time. And I would point out, look at how wonderful uh, Jerry's ketone production is. And he is you know, 36 hours into the fast when he shows you those uh, numbers of 2.1 and 2.8. But when you take healthy people and say, well, how fast can they make a ketone? Um, you, you'd like to think the more fat we have, the higher we can shoot our ketones. But that's not true. You gotta have the insulin regulated as well. So in healthy people that aren't overweight, they go 24 hours without food and boom, they've got ketones, 2.0. They go 48 hours, they're up into the 4.3. Remember, Jerry's ketones at about this level were still in the twos, maybe hitting three. By 72 hours, they can get up into five, and I've had a couple of patients' stories come onto the show where they shoot way up into the 8.0 uh, range, but they are like seven days into a fast by that point, and they're healthier than Jerry is. So the man who wrote in and said, can't you just tell me how long it takes to get to these Dr. Boz ratios? I want to get this autophagy. And the part that we don't know, the part that makes me continue to say, you got to be checking. You got to look at your own numbers. Each metabolism, each person's health is at a different stage. And Jerry does a great job of being vulnerable and sharing his story with us so that I can use it to teach you, saying Jerry's best advocate here is his little monitor showing him what he's doing. Because without those, I wouldn't know what's going on, but it, it will improve. And I sent him a spreadsheet that we're gonna plot numbers over a, a period of time in, in hopes that he can uh, use that as a way to reverse, um, as to stay motivated, to not give up. Uh, but this is the other part that I like. Um, when I am trying to do my, my best life, um, the energy and the focus that I find when I fast is amazing. So the, this study looked at lots of different things when these healthy people were fasting. But one of the things I like to point out is what happened to norepinephrine. So think of norepinephrine as, um, as a stimulant, as a energy button. Um, norepinephrine, we actually have in some prescription uh, forms that really help norepinephrine stay heavier or higher in our brains. We use those for people who have long-term depression. Uh, they're kind of, they're, their physical symptoms of depression have really become prominent. Like they have fatigue, they have poor concentration, uh, their heart beats a little slower. Uh, we add norepinephrine and it's kind of like giving them a boost. So I used a, a lightning bolt to talk about that energy. Uh, we make norepinephrine. It is, um, if you were dying and I was running a code, I would use the cousin epinephrine to put into the veins and give you chest compressions and try and get everything started again by kind of jump starting your body with the energy um, uh, chemical epinephrine. Uh, its cousin norepinephrine is a little more stable, a little easier to read, and it's very connected to the focus that we have as, um, as, uh, as we spend time in concentration. If our supply chain for norepinephrine is, is wimpy, we can focus for short periods of time and then we kind of wimp out. Um, more often though, the norepinephrine production goes pretty well, but it gets blocked by heavy glucose levels. So if that glucose is going up and down and the insulin, every time that glucose goes up, the insulin tries to shove it down. So the insulin gets to be more every time you shoot that glucose up. We see the enemy of norepinephrine as high levels of insulin and that glucose uh, is uh, what's driving that high level of insulin. So to know that Jerry had um, a middle of the night awakening where he was so focused that he thought about you. He said, I wanna just show these people what a, a dawn phenomenon is. I'm gonna poke my finger and record it for, for Dr. Boz and her audience. I just think that you win, Jerry, that is awesome. So here are the, here are the healthy people at 24 hours, they took their their um, norepinephrine from just about 1700 average to over 2000 in 24 hours. But more impressively is what happens at 48 hours, they have doubled it. And by the time they get to 72 hours, uh, they are up to 30, they're up to 3700 um, or a range of up over 5000. 
So I show you that to say the energy that you feel as you fast is really impressive. Uh, I like the study, this was done in 2000, but it really helps me have the confidence to say, I know exactly what's happening in these first three days of fasting. And as I look at people who say, but doc, I can't lose weight, I'm doing the keto diet, I'm following everything I should. Uh, the first thing I would be plotting is, how is that Dr. Bob's ratio? If you're doing the keto diet and your Dr. Bob's ratio is 80 or less, and you're not losing weight, then either, so then you need to reach out to me because that, be that would be interesting to study that. Uh, what happens most of the time is they're just not looking or they look randomly because they're probably like me and a little cheap about testing these. At first I was pretty cheap about testing my sugars, uh, but I'm better now. <laughs> what I do want to show you uh, is what I, what I worried about. I'm going to just take one break from this uh, presentation. I'm going to come back to this slide, but I want to make sure everybody's doing okay and check out some comments. Um, so, oh, my comment section still hasn't moved, so I just I don't think that's working tonight. But I can see you on my on my little phone here. So, um, I will say that um, oh, a couple of things. Um, when when I look at um, um, the the journey that most of my patients go through on the ketogenic diet. They don't need to check blood sugars at the beginning. They haven't been diabetic as long as Jerry has, um, and they do pretty well. But it is not uncommon to hear the, the, the folks write in and say, hey, Dr. Boz, I'm not losing weight. I, your, your diet isn't right. It's, I'm not losing weight. And I, I point that out um, to, to say you're not alone, but there is something about uh, when people start fasting. Um, uh, the, the fasting is really where I get really encouraged to tell patients that you should uh, be looking at a support group. So again, I have my little support group here in Sioux Falls, and if folks want to come and they're from Sioux Falls uh, or in my area, come to Keto Group at Friday mornings, and it's free, uh, which is what I would encourage. There's two rules about Keto Group that I would encourage you to set up at the beginning. Don't bring food to Keto Group. It's kind of like bringing booze to an AA meeting. <laughs> do not do this. We are trying to teach people through how, how to cope with stress and life and not use food. And it's hard. It's really hard. Uh, the second thing is, is that um, the people that come to Keto Group want to learn about a, how, how to live life with a ketogenic diet. So you don't need an expert. You need a group, um, which is where fasting is uh, something that I think Dr. Jason Fung, he's a nephrologist that is you know, one of my mentors and has really found that just like changing any chronic disease behavior, um, you must, you must not underestimate the power of a, a support team. Uh, and that is why I do Keto Group. Um, it helps me, it helps people who are just looking at the keto diet kind of coming in. Usually I don't let people talk the first time they come. I want them to bear witness about what we do. Uh, and just know that you don't have to talk if you come. Uh, we want you to learn. Um, and then we really focus on um, how, can, how are the behaviors that are working for people and those that aren't, and what can we do to help people with that. Uh, which brings me to some of the dangers that I wrote back to Jerry and said, I'd like you to turn in to tune in tonight to see what would be the hardest thing to get across to you as you go gang, just gung-ho to do fasting at 68 years old. Uh, and again, he lost nine pounds in a week. And the first thing you'd say is, oh, that's great. And although that's really good, uh, there is a little tickle in my brain that says, that might be a little fast. And I know you really want to get to the right answer, but um, that might be a little fast. <clears throat> mm, there you go. So as I look at um, the, the second half of this lecture is to go, well, what happens uh, when folks fast? Again, it's the first place that um, I'm going to look at when somebody's not losing weight. What's the distance of time they're having between the last meal of the day and that dawn phenomenon that wakes them up in the morning? Even though they didn't eat, their, their metabolic, they need to lose weight. Their body has a liver that is stuffed full of that glycogen. So even though they don't eat, their glycogen is releasing a meal's worth of sugar when they don't eat. It's so awful, right? So in order to prevent that or to, to help get the best out of that, the measuring time from a, a fast is, I say, measure sunrise and then go backwards. 
And of course, I'd like to see 12 hours before sunrise is where I would like people to begin, but some people aren't there. They say, I, I can't do that. I can't go 12 hours without eating. And I tell you, you'll get there, uh, but instead of, of fasting in the morning, I would really focus on stopping eating at like six o'clock at night. And the only thing that comes after six o'clock at night is uh, water, salt. Um, I let people have a little bit of bone broth if they, if they feel they need something. Um, uh, I have I have some bone broth here of, of Grandma Rose. She makes bone broth, and it is gelatinous at room temperature. It is not it is not wiggling around. Um, that uh, that that uh, I think every support group needs a bone broth maker. <laughs> so like you can trade chickens, not chicken, chicken feet made in bone broth if you want to pay the doctor, <laughs> pay me in bone broth. Um, but we're gonna go into the other little tricky part of not only does Jerry need to worry about that dawn phenomenon, he's having a meal in the morning without having a meal. And when I look at people who don't have weight loss, they probably have dawn phenomenon happening even if they don't have diabetes. They're pre-diabetic. They're just high insulin. They're, they've got a tummy that's been there for a while. They have sugars that, even if they're not measuring, aren't great. And you'll know that you're one of those people because your Dr. Bob's ratio will not be 100 or less um, when you wake up in the morning. So let's go back. We're going to finish, uh, finish uh, this um, last few slides because there's a couple of studies that I want to point out to Jerry. So uh, this is a study uh, about ketones and muscle, which is what brings me to say, mm, Jerry, that might be a little fast. So I'd like you to see that this is BHB protected um, the leucine breakdown. This was college age men and the title of this was The Effects of a Ketogenic Diet on Body Composition, Strength Power. Okay, th that's not as important. They, they looked at men. <laughs> it's a long title and I don't want to disrespect them, but uh, here it is. You can read it, go back and read it. One of my favorite teachers is uh, Dr. Jeff Bullock and uh, Dom Diagostino were part of this paper. Um, but so Mr. Lowry and uh, Mr. Wilson were also part of this and they do, there are a lot of places I get very good information, especially for my athletes that do keto. So here are these 25 uh, aged men, or there's 25 college aged men, and they looked at body composition uh, when using BHB. Leucine is actually the, one of the proteins that you, if your body breaks down muscle to use it as energy, the leucine is what we can measure in your blood. Uh, so what they're looking for there is how much leucine was circulating uh, after we were using ketones to build up the muscle. So I simplified this by just looking at the units. Try not to worry that that says arbitrary units. It is just this, the unit of measurement. We're trying to see how much protein um, was being uh, built or broke down. So if you look at the standard American diet and then you compare it to the ketogenic diet, uh, pretty similar uh, we start adding ketones, uh, and again, we're looking at the blood ketones, where we can see that the more um, the ketones were circulating, the better we could, uh, we could measure these units of muscle protein synthesis. So again, you're looking for how do you make muscle in a man, and as the ketones rise, you do have some protection against muscle, uh, muscle breakdown. Because the first thing that my brain does when a 68-year-old man says, I'm going to start fasting from Monday through Thursday. And if you time it just right, that, that probably is more than 72 hours. If you time it in another way, it might be 72 hours. But I'm going to be real careful to say to Jerry, boy, I wouldn't go longer than 72 hours in your fast. Uh, we have muscle that is protected by the level of ketones when they were college age and they were using their muscles. That hormone situation is much different when you're 68 years old. I, I wouldn't say that it is negative, like you're going to use your muscles first. It takes a lot longer into that fast to use your muscles as an energy source. Uh, but I don't wanna risk it in a 68 year old. Uh, the last thing that I try to point out is that ketones do build muscle. Now this is a different study um, and they are looking at college-age men. This is, again, the same authors, so don't... Um, oh, actually, it was, it was from the same study. So uh, they're looking at weeks uh, 1 through 10, and then they did reintroduce carbs on the 11th week. So let's just take a look at the numbers here. So as we look at testosterone over 10 weeks, 
Uh, I really wish they would have checked the hormones at 10 weeks. And the reviews of this article uh, said, I bet it would have even been more robust had we looked at it before you introduced the carbohydrates back. So they did the blood test at week 11 when they had been back to eating carbohydrates. These men were looking at the growth of testosterone or how much testosterone was produced. Uh, and they did it when they, um, uh, by looking at these levels of testosterone. 608 was where they began. If they stayed on a carbohydrate diet, uh, they did decrease their, their testosterone by 6%. These are healthy young men trying to grow muscles. Uh, when you look at the ketogenic diet, again, they started a little lower. That just happened in the randomization. But they increased their testosterone by 20%. And one of the critiques of this article was that uh, what, I wonder what the testosterone would have been in week 10, because I bet it would have even been higher in our ketogenic um, uh, users. So just for those of you that haven't been following me for a long time, I have a couple other videos out there that talk about how uh, when we increase fat, uh, we do increase cholesterol. And one of the hormones that we increase by having a high fat diet is the growth hormone and the testosterone. It's also why we talk about vitamin D and the, <clears throat> the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. We call those the sex hormones. Um, all of those are linked to improvements of, um, you know, when people say, wow, your skin looks so great on keto. First things I think of is, that's why estrogen is so coveted by older women, is that we know if we can increase our estrogen, the, the skin will, will reverse in age. It really does. Uh, you know, we've uh, played that game with uh, hormone replacement and didn't do such a good job, but we can make your body do that if we're, if we're careful. All right, so um, this is where I get back to this little, this little um, uh, teachable moment that I wanna show you, and then we're gonna go back to my picture. So I'm gonna show you this, this bag. This is the product that I released out this past week, and I've been working on this for over a year to get it to taste good, but also to get really good compounds inside my product. Uh, so this has two really important chemicals in it, compounds in it. One is the BHB salts, and those um, uh, are the same as the ones found in this. So this is just BHB salts. It has uh, the the ketones in a can is what I call them. You can just put them in water and you absorb ketones. Last week you saw me talk a little bit about um, the, the ketone pr production. No, I'm going to go forward here, sorry. The ketone production of um, the, what happens when you add MCT. And some of the studies I just went through with you, they use MCT, especially very important to put C8, C10, uh, are the lengths of the fats that we use because they go, they slip right into your portal vein and then into your liver to give you that um, ketone um, uh, production right out of your liver. So the, the salts, the BHB, the ketones in a can, they will increase your ketones for two to three hours. They work really fast, uh, but they only last a couple of hours. Uh, when you add the fats, the special kind of fat, C8, C10, this allows you to not have to take supplements several times a day because you feed those uh, special fats into your liver and you produce ketones for up to five hours, sometimes six hours. Uh, so looking at that, a twice a day delivery is not uncommon uh, for supplementing. When, I'm do when people are doing studies, if they're using MCT, they'll often use MCT instead of the BHB because they only have to get the patient to take it twice a day uh, to keep the levels high. If you're gonna use BHB, you gotta do it again every two to three hours or it's just a salt. It will, your kidneys will get rid of it if you don't use it. Uh, but every time it floats high in circulation, your body can feel that, it can measure that. So um, I, I point that out because I am gonna go back over here and find this screen to say, all right, so, um, I had, um, again, I'm new to this game of supplements. I had three things that came out of the market in the last uh, year, and I've just launched the fourth one. So the first thing I ever did was uh, this ketones in a can. Um, there you go. Oh, boy. Left-handed, right-handed. Okay, that is the salts. That's been out for a while. That's a raspberry flavor. Um, my husband, I love my husband, but he is allergic to stevia. So in... in <laughs> for my husband, I said, all right, let's just put the ketones in a capsule 
and there's no stevia, there's nothing in here but ketones. Um, it is super good ketone, the concentrated kind of BHB that I really like the company that makes these, that made the chemical uh, and really improved the formula of getting it to be clean, a lot more cost effective than they used to be. But I wouldn't put anything else in my capsules but those, uh, those types of ketones. And I've actually spoken with the folks that make them. They really love our videos because they said you, you do a better job of teaching about ketones than we've seen most. Um, and when you put ketones in a capsule, my husband has to take them every two to three hours to stay if he wants to boost his ketone production. Now, he's pretty lean. He doesn't need them as much as uh, some do, so he'll probably take them twice a day, maybe three times a day if he's being perfect. Uh, but uh, when I went to release uh, the um, this product, uh, which is, again, both of them, it's got salts and it's got MCT in it, I wanted to make sure that if the most important thing to me was have enough ketones that you could make a difference. I am used to prescription strength stuff. <laughs> and when I, when I said, oh, let me, let me check on uh, the prescription strength ketones, um, there was no such thing. Okay, they're, uh, they're meant to be in the supplement world, so I couldn't write a prescription. Instead, I was um, left to figured this out in a way that uh, is through a supplement company. And what I cared about was that the product I put out was gonna be good. So I'm gonna check my sugars now. I don't know how long it's been since we started this, but uh, definitely, um, oh, let's see here, there we go. So <laughs> my sugars went up, that does not surprise me. That's what stress does, <laughs> right on cue. Um, but um, I didn't have any sugar. There's no sugar in that supplement, but my body said, hey, you got some of this stuff hang hanging out in the ditches and storage. I'm gonna use that right now because we need it. We need to concentrate. You're, you're live <laughs> and your sound might not be perfect. <laughs> anyway, uh, so then you look at what happens with ketones and the ketones up to 2.2. Again, that's a really good number for me. Um, I've had the ketone production when I used just the salts uh, register, so it, it errored. It, it said too high to measure. <laughs> I don't want to scare you. That is not ketosis. That's not what keto, or that is not ketoacidosis. Uh, that is uh, just a reflection of when I put something in a product, I wanted it to be really strong and I want it to last for my patients, just like a prescription strength would. Now, there isn't a prescription strength of this, but when I chose the, um, the size of um, the serving, I chose this big of a scoop because I wanted it to be really powerful. Uh, now, I just drank this over the course of, uh, of my live, and I will tell you that um, it is very strong. <laughs> so, here's what happened is, that uh, Amazon reviews count a lot for people when you're, when you're making a product. And my product came out and the very first review said, this is way too strong. And it gave me a poor review. And that's a nightmare. <laughs> that's a nightmare. Now, I think it's great. I'm like, um, I, I wish I could talk to that person and say, hey, hey, do not give up on the supplements if you need them, which is where I come back to Jerry's story. Jerry's story is gonna take us a while to get that glucose storage emptied. His glycogen has been in the process of filling up for the better part of, um, I would say, I mean, I think it was 20 plus years he's had diabetes. We have 20 years of filling his uh, liver. Now, he has lost 70 pounds in, now we're up to like 70 to 75 pounds, I think, um, in the eight months since he started keto. And I couldn't be more happy for him. Uh, but if we want to protect his brain, if we want to repair his body, if we want autophagy, we got to get those sugars down, which means I would tell Jerry after watching this lot, after watching all the slides I went through that you, ha you talk about one meal a day and you do that one meal a day on the, the, the three days a week. And then you try to fast for four days. I would say that's a little much of fasting because we want you doing this for the long haul. It's going to take time. You're doing great. Don't, don't run away from doing great. The, the danger of uh, not doing anything is a higher risk for Jerry. Um, but I do, I've, I've been to this game a lot. And when people have success, it's easy to keep going. 
when those sugars aren't coming down, they can get frustrated and then they say, forget it, I tried that, I'm not doing that anymore. Now, I don't see that behavior in Jerry, but I really do know that there are a lot of people out there saying, ah, I gave that a little try, it didn't work. And I'm saying there is a lot of chemistry trying to be undone in the background. So if you look at some of the ways that you can bridge Jerry from the beginning of his journey to the place where he doesn't need any insulin or any help with his doctor, it means he emptied out that liver, the liver that's probably the size of Texas inside, inside his tummy. We have to empty out that glucose. So that means we need times where he has ketones available, but he doesn't give he doesn't eat sugar. That's called fasting. Um, I don't want him fasting for four days <laughs> because I am worried about what, hap what would happen to his um, muscle strength. At 68, he doesn't have the testosterone production yet. He doesn't have the protection that those college age men had that we were studying saying, look, keto, if the ketones are high, we can see that you protect your muscles. If the ketones are solid, we know that uh, your testosterone will rise, which is helpful for the growth of muscles. Um, we can't guarantee that in a 68 year old who's got 20 plus years of diabetes. But what we can do is say, let me offer a suggestion for Jerry. Uh, number one, if you're going to do a three-day fast and you feel like you're not doing good in the middle, the best answer for you is to add ketones, and I would do a combo in him using the salts with the MCT, uh, and I probably wouldn't use a full scoop. That's a lot. <laughs> I would probably just use like a third of that. So the good news is, is that bag probably gets you three times the uh, serving <laughs> servings in one bag than it says on there. Um, but it's super powerful. So check it, watch what your ketones do. That's amazing. Um, the other thing is, is that if you want to spend more days in fasting and then not fasting, I would start with finding a rhythm that is, uh, so you, you talk about O-M-A-D, one meal a day. I would recommend one meal every other day. So like every 48 hours you get to eat. So if you're looking at a, a rhythm that, People like patterns. They like their system to be in a rhythm. With seven days in a week, it's hard to find a rhythm with that, with that journey. But I would say that you find that you fast from Monday and you get 48 hours before you have a meal. And then you eat until you feel full. That's super important. We're practicing a couple of hormones when you eat till you feel full. That's called cholecystokinin, and I've got a couple of videos about that. Uh, but then you do another 48-hour fast, and you get to... Um, one meal a day, or one meal every other day. And if you want to, if you're feeling strong, then you can do a 72 hour fast or a three day fast in between those meals. But I would recommend that over what you're doing, which is stretching four days without a meal. And at 68, that's, it's, not, it's not the worst thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> I, I will tell you, it's not the worst idea I've ever heard of. But I want you in this for the long game. I'd like to see what this, how your, how your journey unfolds. And that means we're gonna have to strategize just a little bit better to say, where have I seen this go wrong? So maybe that won't be you. Maybe you're able to do that. But I think we're playing with a little bit of unknown. Uh, and when there's plenty of unknowns with the ketogenic diet, but there are some awesome things we know. And that is under 72 hours of fasting, we can see that your chemistry is gonna do awesome things. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna have the ability to get those red blood cells. This next crop of them coming out of your bone marrow will not have as much sugar in them. And your insulin will continue to come down if you do the one meal every other day <laughs> and maybe a 72 hour fast. Or maybe you, maybe you have two meals a day, two meals, uh, one meal a day for a couple days in a row and get back on schedule. So those are the things I wanted to cover today. Um, I would flip over to comments, but I still think it's stuck. Yep, that's still stuck. So I'm gonna look at your comments here on my phone um, and uh, see if, um, so we are at um, about an hour of recording. So thanks for those that have held in here. Uh, I would like, to um, to hear if uh, I'll scroll back for any uh, any questions that people might have uh, specific to fasting and and their weight um, and then uh, I I have learned something that I did not know about uh, YouTube um, and I, I I've learned that I thought pushing the like button was just for Facebook uh, but apparently that's really a big deal <laughs> so if you can um, if you can push like on this video. And then, of course, uh, anybody that you think would benefit from hearing that keto has some hiccups 
there is some advanced chemistry that we should watch for uh, in the ketogenic diet. And if you look at um, what patients have come back to me and talked about, um, I've learned a, a great deal from their failures, from the times where they said, I gave up, I quit that. Um, and I, I've, uh, I make, obviously, like Jerry's lesson in the last two weeks teaches me where, was, where will Jerry go wrong? And I learned that from other people. So unfortunately, my phone is buffering and I can't see any of your messages. Maybe I can use somebody else's phone. <laughs> um, the good thing is, is I have live helpers today. <laughs> Thanks for being on the farm. Um, and I, uh, also, I think I can look back at these old, uh, but it's several minutes old that they, the last comment was. So, um, so I have a couple people that say, Mark uh, talks about keto should be without buying products. And I'll tell you, Mark, uh, that is where I started to. Uh, I was like, nope, my mom and I did this without any help. Uh, you know, we lived, we lived off of bone broth, and by we, I mean she. Uh, you know, she had a fourth of a cup of bone broth for 40 days. Uh, but what I've learned is that there, is, there are a lot of people out there that don't have an internal medicine physician as a daughter. Uh, that couldn't walk with them and help them through some of these advanced chemistry complications. And what I've found, especially in my support group, is you don't need an internal medicine physician daughter, but you do need some good education, and you probably, like Jerry, is going to need some supplements to say, I need the ketones to be higher so we can push through keeping that ketone metabolism, advancing that ketone metabolism, while he empties out 20 years of stored sugars. Uh, you know, so some people aren't healthy enough to start. Just like, I don't think you should be on blood pressure medicine. I don't think you should be on cholesterol medicine. I don't think you should be on antidepressant medicine. But that's, that's for the healthy person. And, uh, you know, 22 decades in medicine shows me people come to us in all different stages. And um, my goal is always to get them off the medication in the end. But sometimes they're too sick to do that. And they're, they don't have a support system that shows up at their house. Mom, we're going to do this together. Uh, and a mom who says, okay, <laughs> all right. So, um, all right, I've got comments that are working now, so I can, um, I've ordered bone broth from uh, something basket uh, as well. Um, I would tell you the key to bone broth, there is a recipe in this book, any way you can, this is the book that I wrote, and my good friend is the one who perfected it. Uh, she used to bring it to me and like, yeah, trade me bone broth for about anything. Uh, the key is that it gels at room temperature. Um, the, I wonder what page that's on. Um, the, <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have Grandma Rose look up what page that's on. Because uh, the, the, the bone broth recipe has chicken feet in it. It is not uh, your average bone broth. But what I looked for before kind of asking my friend to say, can you help me make some of this? My mom is in the hospital and she needs... We need really good bone broth. We need the kind of bone broth that would nourish an 80, a 70, 71 year old woman uh, out of the depths of uh, an immune system that's failing and cancer that was in all lymph nodes uh, throughout her body. Um, and we did it. 230, Grandma says. 230 is the page where this bone broth recipe is. And on that page, you can see the, the, um, the website where she blogged about it because she went through several stages of what do you do to chicken feet before you use them and in the end <laughs> you don't do anything you just put them in there uh, easy is best and um, I I have learned that 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 is another supplement but I have not been able to find bone broth that was gelatinous at room temperature so um, I like that recipe if somebody markets that I will totally buy it from you <laughs> Um, so my, I have, I mean, a couple more things I want to go through. I, I have, um, I have something, Love of Hounds is, is, is the, is the handler's name. Uh, I've done intermittent fasting, uh, for a year, keto for two months, only lost six pounds in six weeks, uh, fasted. 48 hours, uh, 48 hours, boy, my eyes are just a little tough on this tidy handwriting down um, 10 plus two months okay so, oh and he's saying he's really weak he's 67 years old less inflammation almost no heartburn I, I saw that comment earlier too that the folks saying I have no heartburn and boy uh, one of the best studies on this was the one that um, 
my, my colleague from, from Duke, um, Dr. Westman, did saying it's not the like the big tummy that uh, you know stops pushing the acid to go up that stops that uh, heartburn, that reflux. That was the logical thing that you say, okay, they don't have heartburn because they lost some weight, but really the heartburn disappears within a, faster than they lose weight. I mean, it's only a tiny amount of weight loss uh, when those when people would say my heartburn reversed. Uh, so I would. Uh, I would encourage you to look at his study, but the punchline is uh, it is the chemistry shift that's happening that improves um, how that heartburn excess uh, was was taking place. So keep that in mind as you look at that. But I would tell the 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 love of hounds, the D love of hounds, um, that 67 years old having fasting and feeling a week that's that's a signal. Uh, many of my patients, when I ask them to fast, I just had another patient who's, <laughs> she's in her 70s and she's from uh, my, my mother's hometown, so I just love her. She comes to Keto Group, has to drive in about 30 miles to come to Keto Group, and she's this cute little lady. And she said, I tried fasting, I didn't mean to, but this happened and I was feeling good, so I just kept going. And, and she got really lightheaded about the end of 48 hours. And I said, were well, you still taking your blood pressure medicines? <laughs> so again, one of the things that happens in that 48 hour fast, you can see that in the chemistry things is that you drop those blood sugars and the fluid found inside your blood vessels goes down significantly. So salting, and the way we added salt when I did it was, at first was we added bone broth when, um, but you can put salt in there and just do it. Um, the, other, uh, the other major, signal though is when people get very fatigued after a um, or they get really weak after a uh, fast or when they first go keto it says to me their chemistry is shifting really quickly and they're dropping their blood pressure so either they're doing it because they're still taking my prescription medication and they need help with their doctor saying what do I stop or um, they just weren't having enough salt so this woman had heart failure and she was like, I, I was, I've been told never to have salt. I'm like, okay, let's not talk about salt. Let's talk about stopping some of the blood pressure medicines if you're gonna do a fast again. And um, she's like, I never thought I'd ever get off of some of these meds. All right, we'll do one more. Um, so I have one more person, uh, Patrice uh, with a G says, my Dr. Boz ratio has been under 80 almost every day for three weeks and my weight is not moving. All right, so let's talk about that because there is another gr really good teachable moment. I could do a whole show on that one. Uh, so her weight is good and she's got pretty good numbers. So the good news is, Patrice, uh, you're close. You are really close to a weight loss. Uh, the bad news is, is I would love to know, is the weight loss, um, or are the Dr. Boss ratios first thing in the morning? Again, first thing in the morning is the purest. As I, as you watch my numbers on Instagram, if I get, <laughs> if I get um, antsy to eat, um, I, I know that if I check my numbers later in the day, they're going to be better. The, the most confidence I can have that I really ignited autophagy in my weekly fast is if my morning fasting numbers are a Dr. Boz ratio of 40 or less. Uh, so when you say, I've got this rhythm going on, I'm checking my Dr. Boz ratio, let's just pretend that that morning fasting numbers are what your Dr. Boz ratio is 80 or less. You say, good job. If you're stable at that level, we need to stress your metabolism again. And that's where, again, I was at that stage where I hadn't lost a single pound. I was a Dr. Bowles ratio of 80 for probably two months. And I, <laughs> I opened my mouth and challenged some of my patients to do a 72 hour fast for 10 weeks. And when they said that wasn't, wasn't possible, they couldn't do it, I told them, I'll do it with you. And by golly, that was amazing. I got my Dr. Boz ratio to bounce. I mean, it really was responsive to whenever I fasted. Um, but what I was doing is I was right on the edge of that insulin just not dropping because um, I could, you know, I could get enough calories in that I just didn't need to drop the insulin any further. And I had pretty good numbers. It wasn't terrible. But if I wanted to lose weight, bam, 72 hour fast did it. So what I would say to Patrice is, Okay, there's a reason that on my Instagram, I, I fast until a Dr. Boz ratio of 40 or less. Uh, and when I get stuck in the middle, if I'm being crabby, if I'm being irritable, if I'm not being a good mom, because it's hard, so, uh, I'll use a supplement uh, to get me through a, a tough moment. 
I also like to go for a float. If, if I need to give myself a date in the middle of a fast and get away from the kitchen, uh, I like those magnesium floats that are kind of like a vacation in all packaged in one hour where I'm away from my phone, I'm away from electronics, I'm away from food, <laughs> I'm away from my kids, I'm away from my husband. Just time out. I need time out. Uh, so I love that. Uh, and nothing like some magnesium to calm you down uh, and really uh, improve our, um, your, your, your metabolism or your energy. So again, I just want to say thank you for all the people that have written in. The comments are super helpful to me. I'm sorry they didn't scroll along the side tonight. We will do a better job of that next week. I will ask you that if you do purchase the Dr. Boz new product, that uh, you give it a hearty review. Uh, again, I want it to be honest. I'm all about transparency. Um, I do think next time I'm going to have to the serving size if I'm going to get uh, no reviews that say it was too strong, not doing that again. Um, but in uh, comparison to my prescriptions, I hope that it helps you. Really, I do. That's what I'm doing this for. So I'm signing off as Dr. Boz. Uh, I will stay around and put in some comments before I uh, turn off the streaming. So thank you again for all those that tuned in. Uh, we are signing off. We are helping your health one ketone at a time.